morning. Welcome to Village in Motion. Today is Thursday, August 11th, 2016. My name is Susan Gerhard, and I have with me Kathy Craig. Kathy is the clinical manager of the hospice program here at Greenspring, and Kathy has with her Bonnie Raymond. Bonnie is a social worker here with our hospice program. Kathy, let me just ask a few introductory words of both you and Bonnie. Kathy, you came to the hospice program via what? How did you get into hospice work? Actually, many years ago um, during school, we, I, I'm a product of the Catholic upbringing. Uh -huh. So the college that I went to was run by the Felician nuns, and there was a nurse nun that worked there, and she had a hospice class. So I took the class and fell in love with it and have been doing hospice. That's wonderful. Just something that sparked an interest in your mind right at that mm -hmm. point and said, this is what I would like to follow. This is what I want to do. That's wonderful. And we're thankful that you did. Thank you. That's good. Bonnie, how about you? How did you get into social work? It was a circuitous route. Um, I didn't particularly plan on being a social worker and um, just fell into a job and decided to go to graduate school. And I've worked with uh, a variety of populations um, and recently moved this year to uh, Virginia and uh, was given this opportunity after having done some volunteer work in hospice and uh, immediately just said, that, so this is where I'm supposed to be, and it's been a wonderful fit for me. That's wonderful. Um, very meaningful, very rewarding, very funny, humorous population, very, very wonderful people here. I think it takes very special people to work in the hospice program. We're very thankful for those of you who, who choose this area to work in both here at Greenspring and just to work in the hospice program, period. Now, Kathy, on your staff, you have a variety of people. We often think of hospice as being just nurses. But tell us about the variety of people you have on your staff. The whole idea to hospice is meeting the end-of-life needs of each one of our residents and families, and you can't just do that with nurses. You have to have a full complement of discipline. So along with nursing, you have, of course, the patient and family as a unit. You have the medical doctor that's overseeing the plan of care and the orders along with nursing. But you have the social workers that are there to help provide the emotional support, the um, resources for end-of-life planning. We have our chaplain to also meet spiritual care needs of the patient, help them find meaning to this end-of-life journey, and how do they leave their legacy to their patient or to the, to the families they leave behind. We also have home health aides that provide bathing, grooming duties, minor you know, housekeeping, again, just to ensure a patient is as comfortable as they can be. And then we have a wonderful group of volunteers from the peer set here at Greenspring that provide either respite care, somebody to be at the bedside to sit with, to talk with, to share peer-to-peer -peer memories, um, life reviews that are done, and, and just that socialization so they don't start feeling like they're withdrawing and, and they're, they're by themselves through this journey. We want the patient and the family to feel the full scope of, of the love and the presence of the team. Thank you for that explanation. So here today we want to focus on the social worker as a part of that team. Bonnie, tell us about how the social worker is a part of that team and what services that you and other social workers provide. Um, well, I uh, am responsible for the bereavement program and uh, providing uh, counseling and networking and case management for uh, the families that we work with. For example, this morning I've been on the phone with uh, insurance companies trying to work on plans of patients that are making claims for the first time, 
because we all know that's a stressful process. And I've um, also been making funeral arrangements uh, and assisting in that because that's a very sad and difficult time. And um, it's always helpful to have a, someone to lean on and who knows what's going on and who can do what for them. So um, if, if I'm a family member and my, my family member is dying, and recently my mother died a few weeks ago. And, and I'm sorry. If, thank you. And if as a family member I am upset and, and I'm dealing with my, my dying family member, and I know these, these funeral arrangements need to be made, but I just can't deal with it, then you as a social worker are there to help me reach out to the, the funeral home or whatever to make those arrangements. Correct. Correct. And other similar arrangements. To, to help in any way I can to work with the church, to work with the funeral home, um, to help assure that you get the best services and something that's going to be a loving, good memory for you. And is part of that just helping the family to identify what needs to be done? Just, just helping them measure off the steps that need to be taken. Mm -hmm. A lot of times patients will come to us and they don't have all these arrangements in place. And of course on top of it now you're putting a medical situation where they're actually dying and none of that's done. It's so overwhelming. So Bonnie can help them process small goals at a time to try to get these things done. And then we focus on the quality of life. If they make the arrangements or can get the arrangements done early enough, then we just focus on living. So I'm, I'm sure you have everything from the family that is, is well organized and is taking care of everything to the patient who has virtually no one to help them. Right, and, and we become their family from the aides going in twice a week, the nurses going in two to three times a week, I'll be going in once a week. Um, Volunteers that come to provide that socialization. So then you have the bigger Green Spring community also wrapping their arms around this person. And that's, that's a great deal of um, relief, I think, for anyone who doesn't have family members because it's everything that we read in magazines and newspapers and, and no matter how many questions you ask, it's always, well, the family members will do this, the family members will do that, and the family members will do that. But there is an increasing number of people who don't have that family out there. They don't have anyone. And they're thinking, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And, and it's, you, they say, well, a close friend. Well, the close friends are people of the same age, and they can't step in and give care and, and do these things for the person. Well, I will tell you the, the most uh, enjoyable and rewarding part of my job is uh, sitting and listening and being with uh, the patients and doing life reviews and what are their favorite foods, mm -hmm. what are their favorite memories of their children, and that, that seems to bring such comfort and it helps people work towards some sense of closure. Um, and I, I really feel that's the most interesting, rewarding part of my job. But I do want to talk about uh, my bereavement support group. Yes, please. Um, and uh, that is uh, every other Wednesday. And that's difficult for me to count because there's three Wednesdays in August. Mm -hmm. And so I can't say it's every first and third Wednesday and make it that simple for everyone. So uh, I will announce that our next group is August the 17th. Then we'll meet August the 31st, September the 14th, September the 28th, and we'll take it from there. But no, those are the dates. You're welcome. And um, we meet at uh, the 
terrace floor of Villa, Forest View. Forest View, mm -hmm. yes, uh, in the home health conference room, which is right across from hospice. Okay. And the best way to get there is to come down the back elevator of uh, Village Square. And, and this group is designed for whom? This is for anyone in Green Spring who has lost a loved one, who uh, a parent who has lost a child, uh, a patient that's lost a parent or a spouse. Um, this loss may have been five years ago and never was dealt with. Um, it could be a very recent loss. Um, and some of our groups uh, are based on material that I bring and present, and um, we discuss and do exercises, and sometimes the groups just become their own, and the individuals take off and explore with each other. What about someone who is facing a loss? Yes. Would that be a good person to perhaps join such a group? Very appropriate, very appropriate. I found myself giving out a lot of my um, handouts to uh, individuals where we're looking at weeks and days mm -hmm. um, or months, right. but they're already tearful and with anxiety. Sure. and fearful of being lonely, and uh, we certainly start the process, the bereavement process then. If anyone does have questions about the support group, they can just call down to the hospice office at 703-923-3122, and we can field calls to Bonnie so that she can you know, sit and talk with them and kind of figure out what the needs are, because she can meet individually with these family members also. I appreciate that information. I think we have really, we're coming near the end of our time. I think we have just kind of scratched the tip of the iceberg here as far as what's available. But I think it's, it's very important for all of us to understand what is available and to remind ourselves constantly of the resources that hospice has and what is available and that there is no cost to us personally for these resources, but that they are here for us and that we should not be afraid to, to reach out and say, hey, we need some assistance, it's here for us, use it and understand that uh, it's here to help us. And it can only improve somebody's quality of life. Right, whether it's, right. it's the quality of life of the caregiver, whether it's the quality of life of the patient, mm -hmm. whether it's the quality of life of the family member, whoever it is. Anything else you'd like to add before we close here? I, one thing I didn't tell the time. The time of oh, the yes, group thank you. is 10 to 11, and we uh, again meet on the 17th in the uh, conference room of uh, home health across from the hospice office and um, it'll be from 10 to 11, and we have a running advertisement on Channel 6, Good. and we have posters on the walls near Hunter's Crossing and here at Village Square. And if anyone has questions, they can call the hospice office, and that phone number again is? 703-923-3122. Excellent. Good. Ladies, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having thank you. us. And we'll look forward to talking with you again. And we will be back shortly with another section of Village Emotion.